What is up you guys, I hope you're doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes and in this video we're going to check out what the color grading tab in Lightroom does. Now color grading was previously known as split toning, so uh, in some comments down below I've read that you're a bit confused on what to do with the split toning now that it doesn't exist because in previous tutorials we obviously used split toning because in the time Lightroom didn't have color grading but it's basically the same thing guys it's just an update on that tool it's not a replacement in any manner so this video is going to be a bit more basic guys so let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how to use the color grading tool to your advantage so here we are in the develop tab in Lightroom guys and here under the HSL tab we have the color grading part and um, just in case you didn't change it or alter the order of these tabs you can obviously do that in the preferences of Lightroom so what is color grading guys in essence it's basically the ability to apply color saturation and also the contrast of the shadows the midtones and the highlights so automatically Lightroom is dividing your image into these three parts into shadows midtones and highlights now here's something that you need to remember all the time guys that color grading goes hand to hand with the exposure of your image so if your image is all the way down under exposed Lightroom is gonna classify it as in the shadow realm so no matter how much highlights you apply how what color you apply to your highlights it's not gonna have any effect if your image is considered to be all the time in the shadows same applies with the overexposure the shadows are not, are not gonna be apparent if your image is leaning towards the midtones and then the highlights so you have to remember that guys just to understand how it works. Now, talking about the interface guys, immediately we can see that we have some differences from the split toning. Starting out, we have we don't have sliders that like these ones. We used to have two sliders, one for tone and one for saturation for the shadows and the highlights. Now we have color wheels, which are a bit more friendly and a bit more familiar to all the color grading in general in the digital world. We can see them when we edit video, we edit with color wheels and also in other photo editing programs, we edit with color wheels, not with sliders. So it's a bit more tangible and a bit more graphics and so we can understand what we're doing. Now, the other new thing is that we have the midtones. Previously in split toning, the image was divided by half between shadows and between highlights. Basically, Lightroom decided that in some point the image was considered highlights and in some point down everything underexposed will be considered shadow. Now we have the midtones in the middle which gives us a little bit more freedom particularly because the midtones control a lot of the skins so if you're doing portraits the skin tones will always be in the midtones basically because our skin is not going to be overexposed or underexposed is the part of the image that we want to achieve the best dynamic range in. Okay, so here we have our color wheels and down below we have our two adjustment tools which are blending and balance. Now blending didn't exist in split toning and these two I'm going to cover them uh, further along. For start, let's continue with the interface. Now we can edit in these three color wheels at the same time or we can select each one, for example the shadows, then the midtones and then the highlights. Now how does this work guys? Here we can basically do it manually. By moving the point in the border we can select the tone and then the point in the shadows towards the borders to add a bit more saturation. Here we're adding it to the highlights and as we can see the highlights is the brightest parts of our image which will be composed of this part of the sleeve and also the lights in the background. So let's say we want to add purple, we can drag it all the way to the purples and then add some saturation by pulling this point on and out. Another way we can do it guys, we can double click to reset it, is just add the manual number over here or just slide it towards the borders to achieve the saturation that we want or the tone. Now you may have noticed that we have another tab over here which is luminance and this basically is another layer to adjust the exposure of these parts. Now we already have several layers, we have the general exposure tab over here, then we have the basic corrections, then we have the tone curve. We can basically adjust exposure in several types of layers to be a bit more precise. So in this case we have a bit more um, flexibility down here. So we can maybe have a bit more contrast in the shadows by pulling them down, pulling up the highlights, and now we achieve a bit more control with our exposure. But normally I don't like to move them too much. Okay, so we have our three color wheels separately or together. And over here we have the general or the global color wheel that basically adds a color to the entire image. But I don't use it too much because it's a bit too general. I want to be a bit more precise. Okay, so let's say that we want to add a cobalt or a blue, dark blue color to the shadows of this image. For example, I'm just going to pull it down here, maybe with this color I am quite happy and immediately we can see that all the image, all the shadows and turn towards this bluish tone. Here we have a little eye over here, we can see the before and after yeah, and it basically adds this color to the shadows. Now remember that the midtones are going to control the skin tones, so in this case maybe I want to add a bit more orange to the skin tones, just add a bit more, just like that guys. 
yeah and then the highlights will control the brightest parts of our image now i don't like to touch the highlights too much guys normally i don't use it at all with the exception that i want to replicate some scene maybe in a maybe i want to replicate some golden hour effect in that case i would add some some warm tones into the highlights but normally i don't like to move them because i like to leave the skies and the lights for example these ones as pure white so the image isn't too unnatural now we do have we have edited like some photographers that use the highlights in the split toning or the color grading to achieve certain looks for example ray Lives or ray mercado he uses the split toning in the highlights to achieve a bit more atmospheric tones sometimes he uses it in cityscapes to achieve a colder look by adding some aqua or some blue tones into the sky or if he wants to he wants to add the effect of a sunset he adds a bit more yellowish tones into the sky another profile that some of you have recommended for me to analyze is fading colors and here we can see that basically there are portraits or cityscapes in the night and basically they add just this color or this tint into the light to make it a bit more dramatic very like a, a tarantino movie or something like that guys so i'm not gonna add anything to the highlights for this image guys and we already seen what we can do but in this case here we can see that we have a big problem guys the skin tones are merging with the shadows so we ended up with this bluish tone in the shadows of the skin tones which looks um, quite odd guys she kind of looks like she's sick or something like that guys by clicking this button on and off that the skin tones are affected by the shadows now how do we change this guys with the blending and the balance tools which are down below the fine adjustment tools now the blending tool which is the new one guys basically what it does is adjusting how abrupt the cuts are between the colors that we apply in the shadows the midtones and the highlights so by going to the minus 100 what we're saying is that the cut between what the program knows as shadows and what the program knows as midtones is going to be very abrupt but in the opposite if we go all the way down to the 100s what it does is basically meld or blend in every single color that we add so here we can see that if we go to the minus 100 we can see a bit of the cutting over here guys we can see the bluish tones and then immediately the the transition towards the midtones but if we go to the plus 100 everything starts to blend in and the shadows have a bit of orange and the mid-tones have a bit of blue so that's not what we want guys we want something more natural and we don't want all these colors that we're adding blending in in this case in particular so how do we correct this image if we're not going to use blending we're going to use the balance tool now with balance what we can do is basically alter what lightroom knows as shadows mid-tones and highlights let me explain guys so if we go to the negative guys here we can see that the image is already a bit too blue if we go to the negative all the way down to the minus 100 we're saying that all the image is in the shadows so no matter what we do for example if we add here to the to the highlights a bit of orange over here we can see that there's no effect there's basically no effect over here in the highlight parts of the sleeve over here basically we're because we're telling lightroom that all the image is in the shadow range the same is going to apply with the midtones we, we move the midtones around there's basically a little alteration over here. We can see now that the highlights have become the midtones. Basically, we, because we're adjusting the threshold and saying that most of this image is leaning towards the shadows. Now, what happens if we go to the other extreme? Now we're saying that all this image is in the highlight range. So no matter how many shadows we add, for example, here, we're going to amp up the saturation of the shadows or the blue shadows. Here we can see that the change is basically minimum, guys. Basically because we're altering the threshold on what this image is classified as. Now we're telling Lightroom that this image is now in the highlights that we don't have basically any shadows and that's why the bluish tones have largely disappeared. So how can we use this tool to our advantage guys? We're returning to the skin tones, here we have the bluish skin tones that we don't want. What we want to do is tell the image or tell Lightroom that the skin tones are more in the highlights than in the shadows. So for that we're going to move the balance up just going to move it up towards the highlights and here we can see immediately how the skin tones start losing that bluish tone and those mid tones that we added start thriving guys you can see the before and after those are the bluish tones and then we if we pull it up now all that bluish tone has largely disappeared now for in for my taste the skin tones are a bit too saturated i'm just going to desaturate just a bit but we got rid of the bluish tones in the skin tones. Now in this case, maybe I could add a bit more exposure to the skin tones just to make them pop. But this image is a bit more corrected. So blending and balance are very important tools that you have to dominate within color grading or split toning so you can achieve precise results and you don't put strange colors in places that they don't belong, guys. You always take step 
just zoom in, see if the colors that you applied are where you want them to be. And if not, just correct a bit with the balance and the blending options, guys. So in essence, color grading is the ability to apply certain colors to the shadows, to the mittens, and to the highlights, guys. It's a very powerful tool, as you, as you have seen in the Edit Like series. We always use color grading to achieve certain looks of these famous photographers, but it can be a very harsh tool if you don't apply the correct values. In particular, with the saturation, guys, you don't want to go overboard because, as I said, the color grading goes linked or goes hand to hand with the exposure. So let's say that we want to use this uh, color grading settings that we applied on this image to another one. I'm gonna right click settings, copy the settings, and I'm gonna go to another image. And as I said, it goes hand to hand to, with the exposure. And this image is very underexposed in comparison to the previous one. So I'm just gonna paste the settings. And as we can see, immediately the whole image turns completely blue, guys. Why? Because this image is a lot darker than the other one and what were shadows in the other one are basically the entire image or the entire exposure of this image. So you have to be very careful with the saturation. I normally don't surpass the 20% in the saturation. In this case, we're all the way at 78. That's too much saturation for this image. So what? how would I correct this one? Well, basically I would just reduce the saturation on the shadow so it's not too prominent. Just a bit so we achieve a certain effect but the image isn't completely blue so I don't want the image to be completely blue guys that's not a nice image at all so saturation keep it low guys I always leave it from the 5 to the 20% max guys particularly in the shadows because I shoot a lot of images underexposed that's how I shoot images and some of you guys may shoot it overexposed so be careful in the highlights as well so that's color grading guys or the edges of it remember that you can achieve certain and very nice looks using color grading but remember that just be a little bit cautious with the amount of saturation that you apply just practice practice makes king so you can dominate every single tool within lightroom and that's my biggest recommendation to all of you guys so you can edit like a pro i just want a reminder guys that you can support me in many manners one of them is buying anything on my shop which will be linked down below all september has a 25 percent discount on all lots and presets but if you can't support me in that manner just like the video share it with a friend and consider subscribing i'd be very thankful if you can do that i'm tony fuentes cheers to all of you see you in the next one